<laughs> and how's Barbie? <laughs> That really that takes a lot of guts. You've got a, a purple coat, a, a, a black shirt with white dots, a pink tie, green trousers, a red belt. <laughs> All right, so I got dressed in the dark. <laughs> anyway, how many of you noticed tonight when you drove in here, I suppose you came in the regular entrance, that you came in on Bob Hope Drive? Bob's been with NBC, what, 50 years? Yeah. And he's entitled that. I, they also named something after me. You probably didn't notice when you came in. They, you drove over to the Johnny Carson speed bump. <laughs> <laughs> it's the third one in. <laughs> Boy, you're good tonight. Last night's audience, uh, after the show, they decided what I do is so easy that they started their own talk show opposite me. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah. good got everybody opposite me except Gaddafi, and I hear he's talking with Fox. <laughs> now, Gaddafi, did you see Gaddafi on television? No. Yeah, well, he denied that he was a lunatic. <laughs> he said he was given a clean bill of health by the uh, Ayatollah Khomeini shrink. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> now, Libya claims, as you probably know, that we shot down two planes that were not armed. But the State Department today showed some film that apparently they were armed. And apparently with the latest Libyan fighter plane state-of-the-art equipment, each pilot had a, a heat-seeking brick. about the Libyan Air Force. I mean, any time a jet has a Garfield cat with suction feet on the windshield. <laughs> but Gaddafi is just, a, I mean, it's, the shovel does not go all the way into the coal pile with that. <laughs> He's a, apparently, the State Department found out today to show you what kind of a guy Gaddafi is. He ordered the Libyan planes to attack in protest over Sandy Duncan taking over the Valerie Harper show. <laughs> See, I think what it is, you probably know, to get the American pilots ready for combat, you know what they show them? A videotape of what? Top Gun. <laughs> That's right. The Libyan pilots are shown, they watch old episodes of, of Sea Hunt with Lloyd Bridges. <laughs> I tell you, tensions... <laughs> tensions are running a little high in the Mideast, folks. They even posted a 24-hour guard around Zamfir's pan flute. <laughs> I knew that was going to get absolutely... <laughs> Gaddafi is kind of an interesting guy. It's, it's hard to take a world leader seriously who dresses like the head usher at the Universal Cineplex. <laughs> sure. Well, let's see. What else is in the news? Nice picture in the paper today. Um, President Reagan last night and Mrs. Reagan dined with Merv Griffin. Ooh. And... <laughs> And Ava Gabor. I think the president is just, just a little tired. He, he turned to Ava and said, Well, I guess you got tired of living with Eddie Albert out in the sticks. <laughs> but Merv, you know, is a big entrepreneur now. You know, he and Donald Trump, I guess Merv has, what, the casino in, in where, Atlantic City and Paradise Island? He's, Merv's getting a little power crazy. Today he made a hostile takeover of, uh, of Roger Ebert's pants. <laughs> Somebody over here loved that one. Who was that? <laughs> you? Why did you like that particular joke? That Just got to pick out one, huh? Okay. <laughs> I like that. What else are we talking about tonight? But the president has how many days left in office? The 20th. The 20th. The 21st, uh, he's out. He is out. If you notice the press is covering everything, he went in for a minor operation on his finger. Uh, they covered the dinner last night. They covered his last address to the nation. And on January 10th, they're, uh, I think, taping his uh, farewell nap. <laughs> anyway. You probably know yesterday the results of the Electoral College were made public. 
and George Bush announced that he would be the new president. Um, there was a little mix-up. The, the accounting firm was Price Waterhouse, and there was a mix-up. Bush apparently got a Golden Globe, and, <laughs> and our next president, I think, is going to be Rue McClanahan. There was a <laughs> mix-up there. <laughs> I can only depend on you once, right? You're in a good mood. We got a good show. David Steinberg is here tonight. Very funny, gentlemen. We have uh... now we have two people on the show tonight who were booked on this show previously, and we ran long for some reason. I don't know what happened, and they were both, as we say, bumped. One's a funny young man. I think he's making his first appearance with us. First appearance after three tries. <laughs> Thank you. Jake Johansson is his name, and a lovely young actress. And comedian Susie Essman is with us tonight, and she was my wife. Hey, where you are, we'll be. David Steinberg, Jake Johansson, and Susie Essman, who were booked previously on the show, but they'll get on tonight. Have you heard the story going around? I told it yesterday to Peter and Freddie. They had heard it. I thought it was a real story, but apparently it's one of those stories that makes the rounds and comes up every few years, and my neighbor, who I played tennis with, Howard Smith, told it to me about the lady's rabbit who died. Have you heard that story? It's a funny story. Now, the way they told it, this neighbor of theirs apparently had the people who live next door, the little daughter, had a rabbit. And the guy who lived next door had a Rottweiler dog. And one morning his Rottweiler comes in and has got the rabbit in his mouth. And the rabbit is dead. Ooh. And the guy doesn't know what to, what's going to do. He knows the little girl loves a rabbit. So apparently the rabbit, there was no blood on it, but the neck he thought had been broken by the dog. So he takes the rabbit and he cleans it up. He even takes a hair, a hand dro dryer, hair dryer, yeah. hair dryer, fluffs it all up very nice, takes it over and puts the rabbit back in the cage, thinking the, people, thinking the people will get up the next day and see the rabbit and think he's just, the rabbit maybe died of a heart attack or something, but won't, and won't realize that the guy's dog has killed him. All of a sudden, he hears a scream. He runs out next door, and the lady is there. And she, he says, what's wrong? And she, 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 she's almost hysterical. She says, my little daughter's rabbit died yesterday, and we buried it, and it's back. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if that's true, but that is a great story. Isn't that great? Oh. <laughs> apparently, the, apparently the dog had dug it up, you know, and he puts it back, and you see that lady the next day going, oh. It's like Friday the 13th, isn't it? She's just back. Okay, now, I did a joke during the monologue about a Garfield doll. And let me say from the outset, a Garfield doll is a very popular doll. We love Garfield dolls. <laughs> How many of you got a Garfield doll for Christmas? Okay. People stick them, you know, on their windshield, and, and mm -hmm. people get a little tired of that kind of behavior. Garfield doll, I guess, is the hot toy of the last, what, year or so? Yeah. First it was Pet Rocks, the baby on board signs. Thank God they're gone, gone right? <laughs> Rubik's Cube were good right. for a while. Uh, prices of the dolls, I guess, were about $13 to $25, depending on the size of Garfield's dolls. And we've made a lot of jokes about them as to what you could do with your Garfield doll. <laughs> Before we start this, don't send... I know people get very emotional about right. little kitty cats. <laughs> don't send us any letters. We, we check with a few people and ask, us, ask them to send us in uh, some suggestions or what they might have done with a Garfield doll, just to kind of break the monotony. So we're going to show you some pieces of tape of what these people came up with. Don't send any letters here. <laughs> this, is just, this is just a doll made out of fur and polyester or whatever, so... It has nothing to do with kitty cats. I love kitty cats as well as the next guy. But I know how people, how emotional people are with their little kitty cats. So, his, all right, the first one is, it was sent to us by an amateur golfer in Orlando, Florida. And he received his Garfield as a birthday. Can we roll that tape, uh, Bob? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
Usually those kind of shots with a kitty go up in a sand trap, but let's see, all right. Uh, next tape came to us from Winnemucca, Nevada. This gentleman uh, received his Garfield for Christmas from his sister-in-law, and uh, here's his use for Garfield. Just one of the many uses for your Garfield doll, friends. That, uh, right. From uh, Mount Oglethorpe, Georgia. <laughs> this, this guy wanted a bowling ball for Christmas. He didn't get it. So here's, here's what he did. Oh, no, that's wrong one. Oh, I'm one ahead. I'm, this is another use. Oh, we love little kitty cats. <laughs> did I get out of order here? Yeah. I guess I did get out of order, didn't I? All right, let's see. Where are we at now? Well, let's just roll the next one here. I don't know what's coming up now. Oh, ah, yes, here's the one here's I was talking bowling. about. Yeah, I just, I got flip-flopped here. <laughs> Viewers, huh? from Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. All right, this this lady got two Garfields apparently for Christmas. So here's what she did with, with hers. <laughs> Folks, it's just it's just a toy. <laughs> it's great for white mouth bass, I would suppose. Just just a fishing lure. All right. Now, the next tape is from Lompoc, California. Um, well, I'll just show you. <laughs> okay, uh, here's one. Uh, this is a little sad. Um, <laughs> Gentleman, North Dakota, wanted a Garfield offer Christmas, didn't quite arrive in time, and here's the tape his wife uh, sent us. <laughs> of course, as he goes... <laughs> I must, I must mention, okay, this, uh, let's see, okay, here's, here's, here's our next to last one. Go! Oh. Uh, we have one more that somebody mailed in, I don't quite understand this. Apparently, this guy found that shaving, he's got the suction cups and everything. This guy found that shaving in the morning was such a, a lonely experience that he invented this. Let me show you how this works. <laughs> it's a shaving cream dispenser, which I, is kind of, I think is kind of nice. Okay, now, this is just, just a toy, folks. They're not, not real. There's people in their cats, they really get steamed. When we filmed that one with the hearse, we actually went out and shot it with a hearse driving down the street, and people almost went crazy when they saw it. They actually thought that somebody was, you know, there was somebody going to their final resting place and would put the Garfield cat there. <laughs> Should we do this first? We shall be right back. Here's a word from Eureka! Vacuum cleaner. They have the power to sweep you off your feet. And we are back, friends. Our first guest is, uh... My uh, first guest is a good friend, a um, very, very uh, witty gentleman. He's also a director, actor, comedian, and uh, we'll find out what's on his mind tonight. Would you welcome Mr. David Steinberg? <laughs> we 
Well, I said never follow animals, huh? We just we did the cat thing. You know, we were reluctant to do that. I wasn't trying to beg out of it, but people do get very emotional about things sure. like that. Sure, sure, little furry thing. People care about those things. <laughs> I don't know why, but they do. <laughs> so how are you, and how was your New Year's? And... Uh, good, John. Good uh, things, sir. <laughs> how nice. long has it been since you have been here? It's been a while. Uh, a few months. I've been, yeah. you know, directing and vacationing. And, you know, you have new offices uh, since I was here. Yeah. <clears throat> do I sound like Marty Short? <laughs> well, Marty Short was here one night and did David. Uh, and I fell <laughs> literally off of this because he turned around and did you talking to Doc when you said, Doc! <laughs> <laughs> and I fell right out of the chair. It's amazing. He gets right here. I know. He does me at my house. He uh, just can't he stop. Do? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. Well, what's been happening? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was in... Uh, <laughs> Well, our new offices, they would make you think that we were on a big high-rise or something. They just redid NBC and they changed the offices. There are new offices. Now they're closer to where the studio yeah. is. But the elevator that the... Uh, you, you probably don't use this elevator. But sure, I've been... That, that new elevator, it, it makes... So, it bings and tings. Oh, and, I didn't know that. Yeah, makes a lot of sounds. And I, at this age, I am very surprised that I have a new fear. Oh, come on. Yeah. I know snakes, you... Snakes, you all, you're right. Yeah. My other traditional fear is pork. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Deep-seated, deep uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, you know, from childhood. Yeah. You know, pork makes you stupid, is what I was taught. And, uh... But now, and this, and this is very real, I have a fear of claustrophobia just in elevators. So that I... I well, it comes from... <clears throat> I have to go to New York a lot. Yeah. By elevator? No. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm no. sorry. I have a choice. Escalator, plane, yes. I take the plane. Anyway, I go to New York, and in the community, the advertising community, they like to work in these, in the penthouses of old buildings. Yeah. And the elevators are very coffin-like, tiny little things. And I went to visit a friend of mine, Mike Moyers, and he, I'd never been in his office, and we had a, I flew in literally to meet with him. Yeah. And he's on the 19th floor of this very old building. So there are two elevators there, and I can't figure out which one to go in. I go into one, and I, I'm already nervous. I check where the phone is, where the alarm is. I just don't feel good about it. And I'm sitting there, I said, well, at least, you know, it's the 19th floor. How bad could it be? Just before the elevator door closes, a black guy in a stocking cap comes in. <laughs> and stands next to me. So now there's the two of us here, and I don't want to let them know about any fear I have. The elevator door closes, and it goes up the first floor, and it bangs on the first floor. And it goes up the second, and it bangs on the second floor. And sure enough, as if I willed this to happen out of my fear, between the third and the fourth floor, it stops. Mm. And just me and this guy, and I, I figure out, I better, I say, there are people here! Good. I'm hollering, I want people to know that there is a person in this elevator who is nerd. There are people, and this guy says, hey man, come on, relax, it's not so terrible. I'll, you know, how bad? I'm saying, please help! There. I mean, I go, I go. I am as nervous as you get. And then finally, a bell goes off and the elevator moves up to the fourth floor. And I get out on the fourth floor, I say, you know, aren't you getting up? He said, no, no, come on, this is New York. Aren't you used to elevators in New York? I said, okay, he's gonna go, I'm not going back in that elevator. And he goes up, and I'm wondering to myself, when he tells the story, is he going to say, gee, I had a frightening experience. I got into this elevator, and this Jew got in with me. <laughs> uh, so, no, the elevator, so I got to get to the 19th floor. I walk up to the 19th floor, and of course, 19th floor, this is, you know, not my favorite thing yeah. to do. My look is gone, my outfit is drenched. Um, and the, there's a bar on the door. You can't get in because all the inside stairways are, uh, are closed. Oh. So I'm banging and banging. And, uh, it's a fire door? One of those yeah, fire, fire door. And I say, look, this, forget it. I, I'm mad at Mike now just for being in the pen. I said, I don't need the meeting. I'm walking downstairs. I'm getting on a plane and I'm going back home. This was not meant to happen. I walked down 19 flights of stairs. You know, you can build up an anger yeah. walking down 19 flights. I hate the building, I hate the manager, and I hate my good friend Mike. <laughs> As I'm walking downstairs, 
Now these two elevators are going and they're pinging and booming and going up and down and people are walking in, kids with balloons and children and families. They're walking in and I'm just flaunting how, how easy it is to just get into one of these elevators. So I say, okay, I can't be a fool about this. I'll go in. Now I have to decide, do I go in the elevator that stopped, lightning never strikes twice? Right. Or do I go into the other one? I say, ah, they're all moving in, and I go into this one. I get into this elevator, all of a sudden, there's no one around. <laughs> Just me in the same elevator again. And I say, well, this is good. At least I'll be by myself if I get stuck. Same elevator? Same elevator. Now I hear a strange noise of a wheel going, zing, zing, strange noise. I look around the corner, and it's three Hasidic rabbis <laughs> with the yarmulke and the payas wheeling in their big rabbi and they all come into my elevator. So now we're going to go up to the top and I realize if this gets stuck, I'm going to be the John Wayne for this group. <laughs> I'm going to have to be Rambo and go climb through the top and all that. I don't want any part of it. But I got in, we got up to the top, I made it and I'm fine. But just going into your elevator created this incredible trauma and uh, feeling of fear that I still have. Are you really? Really frightened of it, yeah. I go into, if anything goes wrong in an elevator anywhere, I mean, if, you, if anything happens, you know, sometimes a little thing goes off, yeah. I stop it and I get off. They always say that if they break loose, they have some kind of uh, safety, <laughs> oh, sure. which I think is the basement. <laughs> sure. I think it's, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Basement will break your fall. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not I, sure about I that. I would be like the Garfield doll going through the yeah. air. You know, as well, the we're only on the second floor. You know, you could have walked up the stairs. It's one floor. <laughs> yeah, the and door. You get on the dumb elevator. Yeah, the next time I'm going to. You... We'll be right back. Stay where you are. <laughs> Mr. Phobia here. Is that the only phobia you have for your yeah. claustrophobia? Yeah, really, just that. That's a new one. That's really about a it year old. It is acrophobia. acrophobia. Although he, he's a pilot, he's a flyer, but when he's in a tall building, it's a whole different thing. Isn't that strange? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not... It's not uh, what are you working on now? Anything in particular? Yeah, well, I've been... Uh, I've been directing... Yes, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, every time you come on here... Well... <laughs> I've been... Uh, I've been... Uh, <laughs> I've been directing. I've directed the Mary Tyler Moore show and uh, really? Bob Newhart shows. And yeah. That's great fun. No more commercials? Yeah, and, and, uh, and still doing a lot of commercials. You know, it, it, you get to a philosophy after a while. That yeah. <clears throat> everything is sort of cyclic in a way. You know, I, I have a sort of capsulized philosophy now. And it's like when your success is so relative. Yeah. When you're a, when you're a baby, success is not wetting your bed. I guess that could be considered. When you're a teenager, success is going all the way. When you're a young man, success is making money. When you're middle-aged, success is being happy. When you're an old man, success is going all the way. <laughs> and when you're, really, when you're old. really old, it's not wetting your Good pants again. <laughs> Once you understand... Thank you, William Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> Mewling and puking. Yeah. Was it the six ages of man or the seven ages of man? Either way, the capitalized... To think we would get mileage out of Shakespeare after all these That's years. Right. <laughs> Any way that I can. The holidays were nice? Ho the holidays were very nice. Do you celebrate nice. Hanukkah and Christmas both? No, you? no, I don't celebrate Christmas. Yeah, no, that's not no, I don't do that. <laughs> uh, nice pork roast or something for Christmas. No, no, we don't, we don't do... No, we celebrate Hanukkah. Yeah. My kids go to a Hebrew school, and uh, the other day my daughter was singing, We Are Christians All the Way. I don't Is that ask a progressive me, school? I don't know. I'm checking into what they're teaching her right now. Um... <laughs> uh, but I, I've been traveling a little bit, you know. Uh, I have a problem when I travel without my wife or without my friends, and that is that if I see celebrities out of context, yeah. I don't recognize them. I can understand that. I mean, if, it's just amazing. It could be the biggest celebrity, someone I respect. It, like, if I saw you in the supermarket. Yeah. No, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I know. And I go there frequently. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure, I'm sure you're in the supermarket yeah. a lot. For $5 million, what's a quart of milk cost? Quart of milk? Quarter milk today? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, okay. Quarter milk today would be about 37 cents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How much is it? No, you're close, you're close. Uh, what is it? 
about a dollar and a quarter, am I right? Oh, a quart, a quart. A quart, a quart, a quart. Oh, I thought you said a quart, which is, a quart is about, I think, a, a third of a, of a quart. Oh, sure. A quart, it's a... a quart, yeah. It's a physical term, a quart no, is a very... I understand. All right. I, well, I don't shop for milk. No, no, you shop for other things. That's right. Oh. A loaf of bread for $10 million. No, you don't have it. Oh, no, that I can tell you, that's around 80 cents. <laughs> yeah, that's... Yeah, it depends what kind of bread. That's right. Yeah, this kind of bread. So, so I don't recognize celebrities out of, out of context. What's a bottle of booze? <laughs> Boom, right? <laughs> a six-pack, he would know. <laughs> All right, I, I don't... Don't shop No, no, you, you can't be expected to, really. So, hmm. I... I was standing... What a dirty trick. <laughs> dirty trick. <laughs> I was standing on the street with my friend Zippy. And <clears throat> to give you an example of how this worked, there's a guy next to me and he said, David. I said, yeah. He said, George. I said, George. And he said, Carlin. And I said, Carlin. <laughs> he said, George, Carlin. I said, George. Carlin. And he said, George Carlin, George. I said, George. I and it was George Carlin? George Carlin, who I respect. I think he's a great comedian and a good friend. And out of context, I just didn't expect to see him. And so it, it's just one of these things that I have. So now, at, at least Ziggy was there, right? Or if Judy's with me, yeah. she'll say, here comes, you know, whoever. Right. So, Pat Sajak. No, she wouldn't say that. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> now, so, we're friends. We can sure, say Sure. <laughs> Since this is your last appearance, anyway. Uh, <laughs> since, since this is your farewell, what the hell? Of course. I can say, I can say anything. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so now, uh, I have to go to Toronto. So I go to Toronto, and I'm in the Four Seasons Hotel, and Toronto is a miniature Hollywood because of the yeah. rampant production. And it's chock full. I mean, the Four Seasons Hotel where I was staying is hundreds of celebrities out of context. Yeah. And I know I'm going to bump into everybody, and I don't know who I know anymore, who I don't anymore, but I just want to make sure I get close, you know? So I asked the bellman, and he tells me Jane Fonda, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Marty Ritz directing. I mean, everyone that I sort of know is there. Yeah. I go into my room, I open the newspaper, just in case I run into people, and I see... A, a, a great review for Huey Lewis in the News, the rock group. Right. right. So I've got all these names. Six o'clock in the morning when you're directing, you're up early in the morning. I get into the elevator, and sure enough, there is Huey Lewis in the News. Well, I, I'm so excited that I'm not going to get caught. Right. So before I could say, Huey, how are you? He says, David, is that you? I said, yes. I said, Huey, it's so nice to see you. I'm such a big fan. Said, I'm the big fan of yours. You know, we're sitting there schmoozing, and I figure, yeah, why should I leave the news out? So I say, hi, I'm David Steinberg. You say, how are you? The drummer says, hello. The saxophone player says, hi, I'm a big fan of yours. I say to him, he says, he's a big fan of mine. I go round the elevator. We get down. I notice Huey's a little remote. And the elevator lands, thank God. <clears throat> and Huey goes his way, and these guys all disperse. I say, aren't you going with Huey? They say, who's Huey? <laughs> This, these guys weren't the news. They're just people. I said I was a big fan to a dentist, <laughs> an accountant from Ontario. I thought, if Huey, if you're listening, I don't know the news. Elevators, <laughs> elevators are not, have not been good to you lately. No, elevators no. are not good. I wonder what if Huey, what if Huey must be thinking? Do I just say hello to? Him? I'm a big fan of yours to everyone in Toronto. We'll be right back. <laughs> and hey, news, how are you, news? <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, you're the young man. It's a good audience tonight for a, a young comedian making his first appearance on the show. Jake Johansson, he's going to be appearing at the Punchline in San Francisco, the, 27th, the 17th of this month through the 21st, and he appears uh, frequently at the Improvisation in Hollywood. Would you welcome Jake Johansson? Jake. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Jake Johansson. Yeah. Very nice to be here. I'm originally from Iowa. Thank you. I haven't been back 
in a, in a while. It took me a long time to realize that we were free to go. I'd like to get back. You see, my parents are, are there, my mom and my dad. That's what I call them. And then my... Because my father's even the mayor of our town, although, you know, it's a small town, so eventually everybody gets to be the mayor. But he is, he is the mayor right, right now. And uh, really, they elect the mayor by radio. And so last year, Dad was the fifth caller. And... <laughs> Yeah, we, we didn't get back this, this... I spent the holidays here with my girlfriend, Diane. That's my girlfriend. She has a job. And we... Uh, we, we just were... You know, we were here. We've been... We, they want us... My parents want us to get married. We've been fighting a lot. Like, with this one fight we had, there was even a shaving accident involved, right? Because we had... I had to go and do a show, you know, so naturally we would have a fight, you know, beforehand. And uh, I'm in there shaving as fast as I can with the... Rate. Normally, I don't shave my forehead. But... <laughs> Yeah, I, I skip over that on the way to the other side of my head, kind of a shortcut, like you fly over Greenland to go to Europe. And so, I'm because I skip around a, a lot when I shave, kind of take the whiskers by surprise because I don't I don't have many, but they're very clever. And so, I'm I'm going with the razor. Accidentally, it goes inside my nose. And, yeah, never put the razor in your nose, even even as a joke. Uh, just not funny, or, or to scare your kids, whatever. You look, I'm a daredevil. Uh, I didn't even know that I had the razor in my nose. Already, I had cut that ridge. We all have that little. Oh, it's one of that. That's it's that kind of a cut where as soon as you do it, you make the sound. You know that sound where ah ah ah. Just wait. You, you wish you could take your brain out and let it flop around in the tub for a couple of seconds. So I I. I I decide, well, I have to wash it, right? Because it's my nose. <laughs> Gateway to the inside of my head, so... Uh, I, 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 have, I have to be very careful of infection of the brain. And so I, I, I get the soap, and that makes it worse. So then I, then I decide, well, if it stings when you wash it, that means that you have to disinfect. So I go to get the rubbing alcohol. And, uh, yeah, if only you'd been there to stop me. Uh, just to touch it with that alcohol was like a whole other plateau of sensory experience. You know, wah, I did a backflip. And normally I can't do a backflip, but I... Right over. Just, you know, tremendous arc, no spotter at all. And, uh, Right, so now, at, at this point, I'm like a shivering naked lump right by the toilet. And, and I can't stop making that sound. I'm so... Ah, 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 ah. And, and so then Diane, from the other room, she, she goes, uh, What happened in there, honey? She put that honey on there. But I didn't fall for it. You know, everything is okay. I, you don't want to show weakness in a violent argument like that, or she'll swoop in for the kill. And, and very, it was scary, you know. I was injured and all alone, very much like Wild Kingdom. And, uh, but tonight, good, good shave tonight, and uh, the hair, I have some products in my hair, and I think you want to have a mod. This haircut came out, I just got a cut a couple of days ago. I have a real problem. This one is all right. I, I have the problem where I, you tell the barber how to get it, how, what do you want him to do? I tell this guy once, okay, cut the side short, don't cut any off the top. So he, say, he says right back to me, okay, I'll cut the side short, I won't cut any off the top, which I should have known right then. Those were my exact words, you know. You, you want the guy to paraphrase, so you can be sure that he has an idea of your concept. And so, um, right, he, otherwise he could just be mimicking you, you know. Cut the side short, don't get any off the top. So, so, so he, he, go, he goes to, well, first he takes off my glasses so I can't even tell which head is mine in the mirror anymore. I, you know, I have to wave my hand. Oh, that, that's me. And so he's cutting and that's, you know that feeling where hairs are going by that you kind of thought you wanted? Uh, I, I, I don't say anything, you know, because I, I feel like he's doing, he's talking. That's, that's, they get, they get going. I feel like they forget whose head they're cutting. This guy's, well, you know, I used to be an alcoholic. And, and, um, 
So what he does, he, I said don't cut any off the top, so he leaves a ridge on the top. No hairs are cut here. And the rest of the hair slopes up to this. So I look like a porpoise, kind of. And then, and that's how he thought I wanted to cut. So he gives me my glasses and spins me around in the chair. They always do that, you know, they give you that spin and go, what do you think? I don't know why they, what do you think? I don't think it matters what I think. It's pretty much what you thought before. I, I think it, oh, you cut way too much off around the blowhole. That's what I think. He's a funny young man. I like your style, Jake Johansson. We'll be right back after this. Okay, this next young lady. This uh, next young lady is a young actress and comedian. She's in a new NBC series called Baby Boom. She started as a stand-up comedian, appears frequently at a place called Catch a Rising Star in New York. This is her first time with us. Would you welcome Susie Essman. Susie? I'm here. Yeah. I'm so ex this is fun. I always feel a little awkward when somebody's booked on the show and the show runs long and uh, you But you know, apologized to me, which was very Yes, I did. Well, anyway, you're back. So how's Baby Boom doing? Is that Baby your first? That's not your first TV, is it? The it's my show? first series, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I like it. It's fun because I get to um, work with all the cute crew guys. Yeah. And I have, like, people from elementary school watching me. All my ex-boyfriends watching me and wanting me and knowing they could never have me. Really? Now that you, <laughs> you have a lot of ex-boyfriends, Leah? You, Johnny. you have a current, you? current boyfriend? Um, who wants to know? Well, I just was asking. You know, I, no, I don't. I don't. You. I don't. I yeah. don't. Because I don't. I have difficulty doing that. You know. Doing what? Falling in love. That oh, do you really? Thing. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like the falling in. You know. I think. What do you fall into? You fall into a ditch and you hit your head and you die. That's what you think. Like. <laughs> so maybe it's the wrong word. Maybe becoming in love is better than. Falling. But nobody ever says that. Yeah. You know? And then you run into ex-boyfriends, you think you made this horrible choice, or, you know, do you ever run into an ex-boyfriend, a wife, you know, and yes, you look at them? frequently. You no, know, and you look at them and you think, yeah. was I in a deranged psychopathic dementia? You know? Really? Was I in a complete psychotic state? Or you have that scary moment where you look at the guy and you think, ah, I talked, baby talk to this person. That's ever, does, has that ever happened to you? No, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm the only one, you've never talked baby talk to? Well, some? when I was much younger, but not, not lately. <laughs> Men always talk baby talk to me. Like what? You're, well, Give me what? I don't understand. I mean, you're, 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 in, you're in bed with a man. It's like the culmination of adulthood. And he's talking baby talk. You want to say, you know, just take off the diapers and do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't recall ever doing that. <laughs> why, why do they do that? I mean, what? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You're from, uh, you, now, where'd you work as a stand-up comedian? W were you good at it? Yeah, I still do it. Yeah? Yeah. In New York, I work at Catch a Rising Store here. I work at the Improv. I'll be there tomorrow night. Yeah? Yeah. New York is your home? New York is my home, yes. I just came back. I was there for the holidays. But I missed Hanukkah. I was oh, there for right. Christmas and New Year's. <clears throat> Hi. Very well. And... <laughs> but it's, a, you know, missing a, a holiday in my family is a... Is a... It's, it's a man. whole other thing. Are you, know? you close, close with your family? Yes, but it's, it's you know, they, they behave in a certain way. That I mean, it's like in your family, they open up the gifts in Nebraska and they're probably like, oh, isn't that a lovely train set or something? Like probably nice and quiet and demure, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. My family, Hanukkah, they're opening up the gifts. They're screaming, they're shouting, they're like, ah, give me the receipt, you can return it. You know, they're animals. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, I, I do. You know, and I always have that, my one aunt who sits back there judging every gift, who sits back there like, <laughs> Is that something she needs? <laughs> you know? I mean, these are, these are my role models. Never guess you're out of New York at all. <laughs> no. My, my, my one... I was going to guess Iowa, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would like to visit there sometime. Have you ever been in the Midwest at all? No. It's a great part of this country. I know. I, I'll go. Yeah. So what's the rest of your family? You have, you have sisters? You have brothers? Or what? I have sisters. My sister just had a baby, and I have nephews and, and brothers. And my grandmother, my grandmother's a very big fan of yours. Oh, she really? Yes. Wasn't that nice? Yes, but she thinks you're like the last holdout of the old Hollywood. You know, she has this fantasy. <laughs> Thank you. That's a pleasure. <laughs> she, she has like some fantasy. Tell, tell Granny hello. 
<laughs> she. No, it's Johnny. I'm and just your kidding. sister like me. Why does yes, it get your so grandmother? Thinks I'm the last old to hold out in Hollywood? She has some image of you, this, this glamour image of you. She thinks you're like at Romanoff's every night having dinner with Romanoff's Robin been Solberg. closed for 20 years. Exactly. My point. Is Granny all right? I mean, she's just a little. She drifts a little you know now and then. If she met you. If she met you, she would completely revamp your wardrobe. She would? She, yes. Now, what, 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 what would, would your granny... This is what she would do. She would say... Uh, all right, now, I'm old and she doesn't like my wardrobe. No, what else? Say, Tell me some nice other things about granny, horrible? sure. No, she no, would no. say... She would say something like... Let me think. She would say... <clears throat> Johnny, I see you in a turquoise jumpsuit. <laughs> Take it, your Ed. I see you in a muted color, beige topa bone. <laughs> what the Doc hell would she is say beautiful. to Doc? Stunning. Stunning. He takes a chance. <laughs> Too conservative. Huh? I'm just, I'm just a conservative guy, yeah. you know. See, I couldn't wear something like that. Why not? Well, I don't know why. That, that's, <laughs> that's nice if you know you're a floor walker to. <laughs> Casino looking. It's a, yes, just a little yeah. bit. Two down front, right. <laughs> anyway, we'll take a break. We're coming right back. Give my bet to you.